today we're going to make a method that can spot a chemical of interest and also quantify that chemical of interest. To start, I'm going to hit this calibrate icon at the top toolbar and I'm going to select a generic method that I know my chemicals of interest can be seen on. So I put this generic method on the desktop of my computer, so I'll navigate to it. So right here, this MTH file is my generic method, and I'm also going to browse for a data file that was ran under that method, also on the desktop. I'm going to click my original method right here. I'm going to go ahead and put in a few different things. So I'm going to start with build edit template, because I'm going to redo the calibration curve that already exists here to make my own brand new calibration curve for specific chemicals. So I'm going to click Build Edit Template, and then to this Reset Library button right here. And then I'm going to select the original data file that should contain one of my chemicals of interest, or whichever chemicals I want to quantify. Set my concentration to about 5, and my units into parts per billion. At this point, I can click Start, and it should automatically integrate everything it sees in this data file. If, in this example, I just want to be able to see trichloroethylene, and tetrachloroethylene, I can delete all the other things it attempted to integrate um, when I clicked Start. To do that, just select all the things you don't care about. You can hold down Control or Shift to select multiple rows. Let's go ahead and get rid of all those additional rows. If I wanted to be a little more specific, I could go to search settings right here and lower my criteria for what it considered in its search. I'm going to cut these down massively to about 10% of what they once were. And I can rerun that search to see what pops up. This is a little more in-depth way to get the same sort of results. On this step, I'm purposefully making a single mistake, and it has to do with this tetrachloroethylene chemical. We'll see how that mistake affects it at the end of this run, and we'll go back and fix it um, at the very end. At this point, I want to go ahead and save my library. Let's put my name and then something recognizable up here. Today is August 5th. And then I'm going to also save this method. So this is still a scan cal training. That's what we we're attempting to do. But I'm going to also call it August 8th, or I guess August 5th. Now that I've edited or saved my new library and saved my new method with those criteria, I can go ahead and exit out of this calibration screen. What I'm now going to do is use our method editor, this yellow tab at the top, and I'm going to pull that method into here, the method that we just created. So I think it was August 5th. I'm going to turn this into a sim method. The advantages of a sim method over a full scan method is you limit the amount of ions that your machine is considering. So originally the HAP site can see about 250 different ions. Each ion takes up a little bit of its time for it to search it. If I really want to be sensitive for a few or a small set of chemicals, I can only search for those ions and it grows them in proportion uh, to the amount of scans that you can cut out. So you can be a lot more sensitive with the SIM or selected ion method than you can with the full scan method. So with SIM selected, I noticed at the very end of my previous one that the tetrachloroethylene came out at the very, very end of my heating ramp. So maybe I needed an extra 5, 10, 20 seconds for that full peak to come out, especially if we're concentrating or we're calibrating for concentrations. You want to see the entire GC peak come out. 
So I'm actually going to extend my method out just a little bit. Let's say another 20 seconds should be more than enough, so about a minute and 40 at the end. Internal standard not checked. At this point, I can move on. I'm actually going to build my time windows to consider different chemicals. The first window that I'm going to have the mass spec open in is going to be between 2 minutes and 26 seconds. And it's going to go to about 3 minutes and 17 seconds. In this window, the reason we're putting it here is because trichloroethylene is going to come out in that time period. Down here below references this first set that we're going to be looking at. So down here is where I'm going to put the ions, the primary, secondary ions of trichloroethylene, which is 130 and 132. For my second window for the mass spec to be open in is where I'm going to search for my tetrachloroethylene. We can start it at 317, so right after that first window closes, and we can go just until the end of the method, which is about 4 minutes and 20 seconds. These windows can be much more narrow. It really just needs to contain the chemical you're interested in. So in the second window, the ions that belong to tetrachloroethylene is 166 and 164. Over here, I'm also going to adjust this dwell time. So for these ions, the longer, the higher and the higher your masses get, the longer it takes for your mass spec to search for that ion. This dwell time is how long it's going to search for it, how long it's going to look for it. I'm going to up this dwell time, since we're only looking for a couple ions, to as high as possible. So I'm placing it at 5,000. For the other set, we can probably put that on 2,000. There won't be any issues there. Now that I've specified the windows and the ions that the mass spec needs to look for for my two chemicals of interest, I can go over here and click Next. I'm going to get rid of the library that was created before, not by me. And I'm only going to leave the library that I just created earlier. Let's go ahead and save this method. And now I'm going to change the beginning part because it's no longer a full scan method. This is a sim method, Cal training August 5th. With that saved, we're going to go back into our calibrate menu and we're going to open that newly selected method. But between having to do this last calibrations, I need different calibration levels to go off of. So at this point, you would have your chemicals that you want to look for, and you'd make five or 10 or however many bags you want to make of differing calibrations. In this method, I made a 0.166 parts per billion method, a 0.5 part per billion, one, five, and 10 part per billion method. So five different calibration levels, you know, stepping up between 1.166 and 10 parts per billion. So those would need to be made on that newly created method, or ran on that newly created method. So let's go ahead and select our SIM method, August 5th. Now we can load in our respective data files. So to do that, I'll hit Browse on my data files, navigate all the way back to my desktop, and here I label them with their respective calibration levels, so I'd know which ones to load in first. Now I'm going to put in my units. So my units here are going to be parts per billion. And my concentration factors, 0 0.166. 0 0.5, 1, 5, and 10. Now in order for my method to reference those data files, I need to go ahead and hit selection for all those different data files. We're going to reset the library, so it just reruns all these concentration levels. Make sure you have calibrate library bubbled up here. It's already bubbled in mine. And I can go ahead and click start. At this point, you can see where it flagged your first chemical of interest, but notice I mentioned that we'd make a mistake earlier in the method, and we'd have to fix it here. Our second one, so trichloroethylene, has a nice calibration curve going evenly, and these dots need to be as close as possible to this line. 
that's going to indicate a low standard deviation. We see that over here at 4.6. But we don't have this same nice calibration curve for our tetrachloroethylene. If you think back to the masses that we input for tetrachloroethylene, it was 166 and 164. If I look up tetrachloroethylene in NIST, I really want to change this Q ion to be our primary ion in that spectrum. So tetrachloroethylene has a primary ion of 166. So if I simply just change this to a 166, and then rerun the calibration curve, I now have a nice calibration curve for my tetrachloroethylene. I try chloro as well. I can go ahead and save this brand new method. I'm going to call it sim caltraining August 5th underscore final. And this new final method is what you're going to want to put on your HAP site to go to an event. Thank you for watching, and if you have any HAP site rental questions or GCMS calibration questions, please contact Dan Schink at the number listed.